and welcome to the NFL Contest Show. Can you believe it? It's already week 11 of the NFL football season. Where did the time go? It's incredible that it's already this late into the season. Well, week 10, had a positive week, went 3-2. and two. Uh, You know, kept me in the same position I was in in week 10, tied for 26th place. But lost one point on the leaders as the leaders went, uh, the two good people that are in first place uh, who are sitting at 38 and 12, 75% winner right now. They have three and a half points ahead of me in the, uh, the standing. So certainly want to try to put together a 5-0 and week and try to gain some ground on the leaders and set, put some separation between myself and the, the other uh, contestants that I'm tied with at the moment. So it's week 11, uh, definitely some interesting games to choose from. They've got some interesting lines. I see that the books didn't put a lot of threes in the lines for the circuit contest this week. So that's a bonus, you know, definitely some, some sides to choose from here. So let's get into it. Let's see which five games I like for week 11. So the first game that I like is the Indianapolis Colts, plus seven, Heading out to Buffalo to take on the Bills. I think this is a good matchup between two uh, potential playoff teams. I think that this is a, a, a good matchup of the defenses. Buffalo's defense is, has been really good, and so has the Colts. I just think that this is one of those games where both defenses will be the, uh, the stars of this game, and they won't allow the offense for either team to put any real distance between each other. So with the Indianapolis Colts getting a full seven points in this game, I just think that's too much for them to be given to a team of the caliber of the Colts. Even though the record for the Colts may not reflect it, they're still a very good team. They can certainly run the ball. Their defense, like I said, is outstanding. Uh, their their uh, wide receiver Pittman has been having a really good season. The only downfall is that Carson Wentz, you know, he – does what Carson Wentz does, and he makes terrible decisions at very bad times in the game. But I think that they'll be able to run the ball. They'll be able to lean on uh, Jonathan Taylor, Naeem Hines, not really ask Carson Wentz to do too much in this game and try to keep him from making the mistakes that he has in the, in the previous games this year. And I just think with the Buffalo Bills, you know, with the blowout, game that they had last week against uh, the, the New York Jets. You know, we've seen this team score uh, quite a few points in several other games this year, but the uh, caliber of the opponents that they've played in some of those games may not have been the highest of quality. They certainly were fortunate to face some uh, lesser quarterbacks in some of those games where they weren't facing the first string uh, quarterbacks. So, you know, it definitely inflated some of the numbers that they've had. And I just think that, again, seven points in this game is just too many points to be given to this Colts team that we know they can run the ball. If they can run the ball and they can play defense, they can stay in this game and keep themselves with a chance to win it. And having a full touchdown, even on the road in Buffalo, uh, I don't think it's going to be that much of a difference. I know the weather isn't going to be that good, but both teams have to play in it. And again, if the weather is bad, a running, a running uh, game is certainly something you want to have, and I would take the Colts running game over the Buffalo Bills running game, a team that has relied mostly on their quarterback to do most of their rushing. So for my first pick, give me the Indianapolis Colts plus seven. So the second game that I like is the Carolina Panthers minus three and a half at home taking on the Washington football team. I just like uh, the way this Carolina Panthers team is trending. I think uh, a lot of people are given a lot of credit and a lot of, you know, hype, I guess you would call it, to the return of Cam Newton. And I, you know, it, it, he is a, an upgrade to Sam Darnold for sure, and he's an upgrade to P.J. Walker. Uh, but the real reason that I like the direction that this team is going is the return of Christian McCaffrey and the addition of Stefan Gilmore to the defense. Having a, you know, obviously having Christian McCaffrey back for the Carolina Panthers gives them 
you know, a potential MVP candidate, uh, you know, last season, he, they're getting back one of the best uh, weapons in the NFL. So, of course, this offense is going to, you know, they're going to step up, you know, with the way that they're going to be operating. And now you're giving us Cam Newton, who, if nothing else, defenses have to respect him as a runner. And he still is capable of throwing the ball. He's not accurate throwing the ball deep. But if you don't ask him to throw the ball deep, this team should be able to be just fine if they can run slants and, you know, screens to McCaffrey out of the backfield and, you know, get Chuba Hubbard, you know, involved in the game plan. I think that the Carolina Panthers offense is going to be, uh, they're going to be going in a positive direction the rest of the season. And then on the other side of the ball, the addition of Stephon Gilmore, a lockdown corner, just makes this defense that much better. Uh, they got C.J. Henderson that they brought in, and, you know, he's finally starting to, to work himself into a, you know, where he knows the defense and what's expected of him. And we know that this de this team was already one of the best against the rush. So now you've basically eliminated the other team's number one receiving option, and they're playing 10-on-10 uh, with, you know, a, a defense that's really good against the run with just, you know, uh, their front four without having to blitz. So I just think this Carolina team, they're, they're getting right at the right time. And even though I know a lot of people are going to be saying, oh, you know, they're getting uh, a, lot of, a lot of hype because of the return of Cam Newton, that may be true. But I think it's warranted not because of Cam Newton, but because of the other options that they're getting back on offense and the, the guys that they have on defense. Now, for the Washington football team, it's kind of the same thing where they're getting a lot of a lot of hype because they beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home last week off the bye. But if you watch that game, I mean, it just seemed like everything that could go right for the Washington football team did go right. They were converting on third downs, you know, extending drives. It I mean, it was like the perfect game for them to be able to pull out that win at home against Tampa Bay. And you had Tom Brady, you know, with a couple of turnovers that are not, you know, something that he traditionally does. So I just, I just think Washington's getting way too much credit. And I think that Carolina is starting to get into form for a team that could potentially get hot and make a run at the playoffs uh, this year. And with Cam Newton, I think that he does bring a little bit of juice to the team. He does get the other players excited. And he does get the fan base excited. And I think that's going to be a benefit for them, benefit for them at home. So I, I'm going with the Carolina Panthers. So for my second pick, give me Carolina minus three and a half. So the third game that I like is the Minnesota Vikings plus one and a half at home, taking on the Green Bay Packers. Uh, this should be a pretty exciting game. Uh, obviously, the Minnesota Vikings can't afford to lose any more games if they want to try to make the playoffs and potentially save Coach Zimmer's job because if he loses this one, this might be it for him. Uh, they're taking on a Green Bay team that has had their number with Aaron Rodgers at the helm for the last few seasons. But I think this lines up well for Minnesota. It looks like they're supposed to be getting back several of their key defensive players. I believe their safety, uh, Harrison Smith, their cornerback, Patrick Peterson, their linebacker, Barr, they're all supposed to be coming back this week. So that should be a positive for this defense. And we've seen on the Green Bay side of the ball, they've actually sustained quite a few injuries the last couple of weeks. They lost their tight end, Robert Tunyon. Uh, looks like Aaron Jones isn't going to be able to go for them this week. Bakhtiari's not coming back from the injured reserve just yet. Uh, Alan Lazard may be out this week as well. And it looks like Aaron, Aaron Rodgers has been dealing with a toe issue. Uh, he's going to play what he said, but you know it could, could definitely affect the way he throws the ball, and especially if it's cold in Green Bay or in, well, it's indoors in Minnesota, so the weather shouldn't matter that much. But still, even pushing off with a bad foot could definitely affect the way Aaron Rodgers throws this ball, throws the ball. I just think that this is a good spot for the Vikings here. The Minnesota offense has been pretty good throughout the year. 
Uh, and they're going up against uh, a Green Bay Packers defense that's been playing well, but now they've lost uh, Whitney Merciless. Uh, you know, they've been playing with a, a motley crew of defensive backs like Rasul Douglas, a guy they got off the street uh, ever since they lost some of their key uh, cornerbacks. So, I mean, as well as they've been playing, the, uh, the regression is, is due for some of these guys and some of the plays that they've been making. And I just think that, again, this sets up well for the Vikings. They're at home. This crowd's going to be raucous. It is actually one of the stadiums that when, this, when they play uh, division rival, that the crowd can certainly have an effect on the game as far as the noise is concerned. And I just think that the Minnesota Vikings, they know what's at stake in this game. They're going to come out. They're going to try to run the ball. They're going to be able to get some play-action passes going to their key receivers and get this offense moving. As long as they can get some third down conversions, I believe they've got a good shot at winning this game. Uh, you know, with the line being one and a half, that's basically what you're asking is who's going to win the game. I'm going to go with the home team in this one. So for my third pick, give me Minnesota plus one and a half. So my fourth pick is the Arizona Cardinals minus two, heading out to the Pacific Northwest to take on the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. I just think that this is a good spot for Arizona to get back on the winning track after losing their last game. I, I'm, I'm expecting Kyler Murray to play. That's how I'm handicapping this game. I believe that they'll play him this week with Colt McCoy banged up and them having to buy week next week. This should be fine for him to be able to come back and play knowing that he'll be able to rest again for another week before they have to play another game. And why not get him some reps after he's already sat out two weeks and they've gone one and one in those games. But they've got to really try to take advantage of this opportunity with the uh, Rams losing their last game before they went on their bye. If they can win this game, they can have a two-game uh, two lead in that really tight race for the uh, NFC uh, West division. Uh, so I just think that this is an important game for them to win. So they'll definitely have Kyler Murray in there to play. I'm not too sure if DeAndre Hopkins is going to play, but they've still got plenty of other options with A.J. Green back. Uh, they've got Rondell Moore, Kirk, Ertz. Uh, you know, James Conner has been playing really well out of the backfield. And now on the defensive side of the ball, I believe most of their starters should be playing in this game. Uh, they've got a couple guys on the injury report, but a lot of them are limited, so they should have the potential to play this week. And on, for Seattle... I just think that Russell Wilson may have rushed himself back from that finger injury a little too quickly. He did not look like himself in that game last week against the Green Bay Packers. Uh, I was on them last week. Uh, I know there were some questionable uh, calls, questionable plays in that game that could have gone either way and maybe given the uh, Seattle Seahawks a little better shot in that game. But just watching the way Russell Wilson played, he just didn't look like himself. Uh, the offensive line for Seattle still can't protect. Uh, doesn't look like they're going to be getting back. Uh, they're running back. I think it's uh, Carson. He's regressed in his neck injury, so he's probably not going to play. Alex Collins is on the injury report. He might be out. It looks like they're dealing with some injuries on the defensive side of ball for Seattle with Adams having a groin injury and uh, DJ Reed having a groin injury. So you know that if that's... Even if they're, they're playing, if they're playing with groin injuries, they're definitely gonna, not going to be 100%. They're going to be you know, dealing with some really fast wide receivers with this Arizona team, and it's definitely a, a possibility that they could re-injure themselves and be out in this game. So I just think it's a good spot for Arizona here. Uh, you know, I like the, the fact that it's only minus two, so a field goal wins it. Uh, I, I don't think that the home field advantage for Seattle is going to be that much of an issue for Arizona. I just like the, the possibility of them you know, getting that two-game lead in their division. I think it matters a lot as they're heading into the bye. And again, I just don't think that Seattle's playing really well. Uh, their season's pretty much over. All they can really do now is play spoiler by trying to you know, knock other teams out of the playoff race. Because their season is pretty much over. And I think you might see that from some of their players. 
You know, we saw in the game last week at the end of the uh, Green Bay game that there were some penalties, some frustration penalties. So you can see the immaturity level with this with this team. And if they're down in this game against Arizona, they might just lay down and quit, knowing that their season's already over. So the fact that it's only minus two for my fourth pick, I'm going with Arizona, minus two. So my fifth pick is the Pittsburgh Steelers, plus six and a half, heading out to L.A. to take on the Chargers. So this is an interesting game. We've still got Ben Roethlisberger on the COVID list, but the coach is saying that if he can play, he's going to play, that he doesn't need to practice with the team in order to be ready. So we don't know who the quarterback is going to be for Pittsburgh, but I'm actually not too worried if it's Mason Rudolph or if it's Ben Roethlisberger. I think it's pretty equal either way. Uh, what you're going to get from the Pittsburgh Steelers offense with either player at the quarterback position. So I'm not really too concerned about that. Uh, I think that this Pittsburgh team on the offensive side of the ball will be able to run the ball against the uh, Chargers. Uh, we've seen it throughout the season that the Chargers give up plenty of, of uh, yards on the ground. And Pittsburgh's offensive line has really started to play well together now that they've gotten you know, what is it, 10, 11 games under their, you know, in under their belt playing together. And Najee Harris is turning out to be a really good uh, running back for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think they found somebody that will fit into their system. And I expect the Pittsburgh Steelers to run the ball anywhere from 35 to 40 times in this game and just keep pounding it, pounding it, pounding it, and essentially wearing down the Chargers' defense that as of right now may be missing several of their key players due to COVID issues. Uh, it looks like Joey Bosa uh, is not vaccinated, but he's only a close contact. But that doesn't mean that he either can't test positive or I'm not exactly what all the protocols are for people that are unvaccinated. I know if he was vaccinated and he tested negative that he would be within 24 hours, he would be fine. Being unvaccinated, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to play. Uh, and there's a couple other uh, players on the defensive side of the ball that are dealing with other issues, uh, some injuries. So again, I just think that it sets up well for the Pittsburgh uh, offense to be able to run the ball against the Chargers here. And again, you know, the Chargers offense does have a lot of shiny weapons. You know what I mean? They got a lot of big toys on their, their offensive side of the ball, but they still struggle on third downs. They still struggle and have to try to go for it on fourth downs repeatedly in order to try to steal possessions to main, you know, to stay in the game. We saw it uh, against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles where they had to go for it on fourth down in order to give themselves an opportunity to tie that game and eventually win it, you know, in the end. But that type of risk, you know, it, it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. When it doesn't, it blows up in your face. And that could be what we see again this week with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, I don't know if uh, T.J. Watt's going to be playing. He's been dealing with a hip injury. We know that Minka Fitzpatrick's going to be out, and Joe Hayden is dealing with a foot injury. So there are some injury concerns on the Pittsburgh Steelers' defensive side of the ball. But again, I just think that their defense is good enough to keep this uh, Chargers offense in check and allow them to keep this game close. And if it's six and a half, even if the game goes to overtime, you can still uh, cover the spread because you can only lose by six. So getting that extra hook is a definite benefit when it comes to something of uh, that type of scenario. And again, this is another one of those spots where Mike Tomlin as a road uh, underdog uh, covers the spread about almost 70% of the time. So, you know, this is a good spot for Pittsburgh in that trend area. We know that as far as the home field advantage in L.A. is concerned, there's not going to be one for the Chargers. If anything, this will be like a home game for the Pittsburgh Steelers with all the fans that they have in the California, Los Angeles area and the fans that will travel out for the game. So they might as well consider this a home game for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So with it being six and a half points, I just think that's way too many points to be given this offense, regardless of who the quarterback is for Pittsburgh. And again, the issues of uh, 
COVID for the Chargers make me wonder, make me think that they'll be able to run the ball and keep this game close, if not potentially win this game outright. So for my fifth and final pick, give me Pittsburgh plus six and a half. So those are my five picks for week 11 of the NFL contest. Uh, if there's any changes, I'll be sure to put it in the comments with this video. I always post it in my blog on deadmoneymedia.com if there are any changes. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well out there in their contest. I'd love to know in the comments if anybody is entered in a contest and how they're doing. If they're uh, contending for the cash, are you in the Circa contest? How are you doing in the Circa? If not, are you interested in one of these contests next season? I really hope a lot more people get interested in these particular types of NFL contests because I think one of the enjoyable things about it is is that you only have to put in a you know a specific amount of money that you're either going to win or you know that you could potentially lose with the possibility of winning you know a lot more money. So I, I hope a lot of people out there are enjoying this content. I hope you're in, uh, involved in a contest and that you're doing well. I know a lot of you out there are using this as your individual bets. Just know that every one of these picks that I make in the contest, I also bet individually, you know, money on them. So, you know, I'm not just doing the contest picks. I also do bet them, you know, individually and, you know, for cash. So uh, I just want to know how people are doing if they're in the contest. But let's have a good week 11. Thanks for watching the video. Hit that like and subscribe button. And once again, thanks for watching.